Okay, hi everyone, good morning. I am uh, Otilia Baraboy, I'm the executive director and manager of the film festival, uh, Romanian film festival in Seattle. Um, this year should be our seventh year. If everything goes well in November, uh, we might uh, hold the seventh edition at the uh, SIF Cinema Uptown. We still don't know yet. Um, this is up in the air. We'll learn more about it in June. As you all know, uh, SIF, Seattle International Film Festival, is um, coping with um, difficult times, as uh, many film festivals in the world, and Tudor will tell us more about it. Uh, thank you that you chose to drink your morning coffee with us. Um, this is the first uh, meeting of our informal conversation series, Morning Coffee and Films. Um, this is an uh, online uh, event that complements our virtual cinema and of Eastern Europe program that is a retrospective of, of the Romanian Film Festival to each we are adding a few um, Eastern European film gems. And uh, please stay tuned for more. Next week we will announce um, um, promising partnership with uh, Bogdan Darev, who is a local filmmaker from uh, Seattle, originally from Bulgaria. And also we are, we are continuing our partnership with the Northwest Film Forum. Uh, today we welcome um, our friend and filmmaker, producer, president and founder of Transylvania Film Festival, Tudor Giurgiu. The Wire declared that it's, it is the world's top 50 leading film festivals. Um, we are very honored to have him here. Uh, Tudor also uh, directed and produced music films, documentaries, shorts, and uh, two of these films, Up Snails and Man and Parking, are also available on our online platform, and you can see them from your houses, from your homes. Um, so, uh, Tudor, you are very, um, I would say, we were all impressed by your presence at the Romanian Film Festival in 2016. You are um, not only a very successful uh, filmmaker and producer, but also a very, very generous man, very modest man. Um, and um, we are grateful that you took time from your busy schedule to uh, meet with us, to our little group today, uh, this morning, and uh, talk about your films and uh, uh, film festivals in general. So um, uh, in your um, interview that, um, um, uh, you uh, did for our blog stories off the wall you told us that you have a lot of zoom meetings <laughs> and <laughs> that you feel conflicted about it that you actually hate doing so many zoom meetings um, can you tell us if you would develop like a discipline um, a way to protect yourself against you know this inv invasion of virtual events in our lives so on the one hand we're told to stay home you know and take care of ourselves and dogs you know spread out the disease but at the same time we have to, we face this we are bombarded by uh, temptations and um, uh, you know um, uh, interactions that we are asked you know to have on internet on the internet what do you do to protect yourself how do you balance you know uh, these um, uh, these daily you know what has become become a, a a code for social behavior now. Now it's the new uh, norm, actually. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of difficult, I think, to to find a real balance. But I think the only the only thing which helps me is that I I was having a a, a project to work on like another like my next project and i had to research to read books to work on the script to collect uh, and to match together lots of uh, interviews which i did last autumn and this summer this winter so you know having something really practical to do having something uh like i had an objective i had a scope i had a deadline to finish a treatment up to this date this helped me a lot because i i could really uh find this balance and understand that it's important actually to not to waste time into hell of a lot of hours uh, looking on netflix or other platforms and and doing zoom meetings also meanwhile i did my 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 usual talks with my colleagues 
about the organization of the, of the our film festival in Transylvania, which was due to start in end of May. And of course, we it was a complicated decision. Maybe we'll take we'll, we'll talk later about you know either postponing or cancel it and so on. So I think having some practical things on your agenda really helped me focus and helped me in a way achieve a certain balance. And uh, I didn't waste time. I was very Actually, I, I, I felt, you know, in a way, so fortunate to have this buffer time, these months where I, I could work and I could read, and this would have never happened in, in this, at least in this time frame of the, of, of the year. So uh, I, I, I won't be able to, to give any advices of time management, or I think anyway, it's, it's, it's a lot about uh, your, uh, or everyone's, uh in a way preparation or i think it's also generational thing uh, of course our kids and uh, the guys who are born after 2000 they are much easier in in, in you know, adopting all this new social code and so on i was you know i was born in uh, ceausescu time under dictatorship in romania i for me, this isolation or lockdown thing were, were I mean, I've experienced it till, uh, you know, 18 years old. I mean, I was, I was forced to live in, it, in this kind of lockdown and having just books to read and, uh, you know, nothing more, nothing else to do than, than, you know. But of course, it was a lot of going out at that time. Now, going out is, is or at least was a bit complicated. Mm. Uh, you told us in um, your interview that you are working on a new script. Can you share a bit about it? What you know? What is it about? You know, uh, I, something old I, or new? I, I, I won't get into too many details, but I, my producer Juana was uh, was researching a story happened in uh, in 1989 when when Ceausescu dictatorship fell. And they researched uh, something very interesting happening in, in, in one city in center of Romania in, called Sibiu, where, uh, where some weird things happening. I mean, the, there were lots of killings in that city, but without, we realized that it was weird why people would kill after Ceausescu left, when you know people were on the streets and they were happy. But in that particular city, the army people killed militia officers or police officers as they are now. And it was very weird for us to understand why these things happened because the army and the police were on the same street, like opposite side. And it, it, it happened because of the chaos in the revolution. The young soldiers felt stressed and being attacked by the police officers who were actually trying to find a refuge and to find they, they were looking for a place to to hide so they've been killed by by let's say by mistake by the young 19 year old soldiers and as it was not enough the boss of the army unit was starting a, a kind of a terrorist hunt across all the city. We were all poisoned in those days, and I remember in leaving this so-called revolution live on TV, we were all poisoned by the concept of terrorists. Mm -hmm. We were looking for terrorists, and we've been hearing that terrorists are all around in every city. They were killing uh, innocent people, but who were those terrorists? Nobody knew. So. What happened was that this boss of the army unit actually was looking into the whole city for terrorists and everybody who was suspect was brought into this big army unit and was deposited in a way into, the, into a big pool, a swimming pool, which was not used. And imagine that pool got together. I mean, in, 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 in this pool were put around 400 people, mostly of them, or actually all of them innocent uh police officers uh, securitate officers uh, roma people everybody who looked a bit uh 
strange or uh, they were assumed to be terrorists and they were kept there under very horrible conditions. They were not being fed properly or uh, they were young soldiers were around them with army, with, uh, with guns and uh, they were released. I mean, some of them were released by end of February when things were really calm in Romania, but nobody actually, I think, uh, nobody paid too much attention of this human the human rights issues related to how to keep those people into into a locked so i'm that's the real fact and i'm 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 trying now to to tell all this story through the perspective of three different characters who were who were uh, who were so called terrorists and um uh, it was a difficult, and it is still a difficult story because things were not yet solved. I mean, uh, there is a lot of trauma, human trauma, the whole city, I think, if you talk to several people, nobody knows exactly what has happened there, why innocent people have been killed. So um, I'm, I'm trying a bit to, to, to dig and to, at least to find my answers and then be able to put together everything into a into a more coherent story. Mm, this is wonderful. And this leads us to the next question that I had for you, because in all the other films that you made, uh, even you know, for Of Snails and Man and Why Me especially, that's uh, inspired by real life events, by the death of a young pro prosecutor, Christian Panait, who uh, died in shady circumstances. And then uh, even Parking is based on an autobiography, actually. So is it important, how important it is for you that your, let's say, your inspiration to come from real events that actually affected people in meaningful ways, and you try, try I, to make sense of it yourself. I don't think it's particularly important, but I'm again fortunate enough to live in a country where, where, a lot of things do happen, like daily or weekly basis. I mean, we are living, I think, very interesting times and uh, I think if you if you are really paying attention there are stories to tell every I mean from everywhere if you want from the streets from the and and because the after this change of political regime Romania I think did not solve these these important historical issues like you know finding answers about you know who was guilty and not under the revolution uh, assuming some uh, some uh, uh, or researching very well the the historical period between 1945 and 1989 all the political compromises all the all the um, all the let's say the the compromises between uh, between uh, intellectuals, for example, and the Communist Party, between the Orthodox Church and the Communist uh, Party, all these all these things were not uh, solved, uh, analyzed, and you know, I I I do believe I'm 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 living in a country where there is so much uh, the, the the quantity of let's say lies and of uh, of uh, unsolved historical issues is, is is so big so i think we cannot do a proper restart and i think we have to we have to look back first to try to find answers and look for for the truth you know uncomfortable truth maybe and then maybe you know next generations could be could face maybe a, a better, uh, you know, a better relation with uh, with our past. But otherwise, I think uh, Romania is a great place to live because we are living in such an. Uh, I mean, Eugen Ionesco, the the father of absurd, was born here, and it's it's happening. Uh, it's yeah, all over from you know street level up to political level. It's really exciting to to live here. I would say.
inspiring, yeah, for you. And uh, I'm going to um, follow up on a question that you had, uh, you answered for our blog, and I uh, would like you to um, develop a little bit. So I asked you uh, if you, if there's um, a little bit of a, an um, autobiographical element in the way you construct, you choose your main protagonists in your films. Uh, and I was talking about, you know, um, uh, a certain, a charming naivete, and also this idea that you can change the world, you can fight against economic determinism, against corruption. Uh, and I'm thinking about of Snails and Men, why me, and also parking. And you answer, um, and I'm going to, uh, and you actually said uh, in your interview, you said, maybe I was always a bit naive, innocent, and I thought I could change the world. I guess this attitude influenced my choice of stories and films, um, uh, and the films I did. Thank God I reached maturity, and now I can focus on different things. Can you comment a little bit? Have you changed in what? Have you lost some of that, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> as, I'm, yeah. as, I'm, as I'm about to be 48, I think it's, yeah. it, it was time to, you know, to, to lose uh, all this innocence. And uh, at least, you know, at this age, I mean, I'm, I'm, I realized I cannot, uh, you know, change the world or the or I don't have the same, uh, let's say, um, ideas or concepts which were very vivid in my mind when I was 20 or 30. So I think it's, I'm more and more now preoccupied about, about history and about things, uh, again, which are not, or issues which were not addressed or solved about, yeah, Romania and its past. And um, that's something which I think comes again. It comes natural with the uh, with the age. We all we all change, and we all I think uh, found other other inspirational sources. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I I realized I I thought a lot about my heroes from the films which I've you've you've mentioned, and yeah, there were. There were characters who were who were very innocent, and they were very sure that they were they will succeed in their quests. But they were left alone, or they were left without chances. And but still, I'm I'm very much attached to them. But now I would not be able to do the same films. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. If you were thinking about parking, you know, parking has, you know, it's in center, the center and its center, this dreamer, you know, Adrian, who is a poet and um, uh, it's inspired by an autobiographical novel. Um, and you wrote the script with a writer. Um, what attracted you to write, to, to make this movie about Adrian and about the condition of Romanian immigrants actually in Western Europe, if you are to extrapolate a little bit? I was attracted by by the fact of doing a film about it might sound a bit harsh but about a loser about a bunch actually of losers who who are you know mature adults but but they are not able you know to they they reach the crisis moment when they are not able to find solutions for themselves and and the most important thing was was this kind of unusual immigrant character which really attracted me a lot because it was inspired it's the alter ego of the of the writer who i think he tried to copy a model which was which came from the chilean uh, mm -hmm. big writer roberto bolaño mm -hmm. who decided to immigrate and he did lots of jobs to yeah to make some money he was night guard he was working for all these uh, yeah, on the beach, waiter, blah blah. But actually, he he looked for for human experiences. He, as a writer, he felt like I need uh, some more more. Um, I need to feel life in a way like I did not felt before. So um, my 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 colleague, the writer Marine, 
left Romania in 2002 with, with I think, 20 or 30 or maybe no more than 50, equivalent of 50 euros. And he, he did these things, which for me were, I mean, I, I, I did not even think how on earth I could, I mean, I, for, I, I would never ever be able to do this kind of thing and to, yeah, knock at a at a parking in in south of Spain and just look for a job and without knowing the language, without having money and being locked into a caravan, just reading, trying to understand the language, to learn the language, and so so this this kind of a very romantic and uh, idealism uh, pushed me to to look for. Uh, for uh, to understand more what's behind this character, and I deliberately I didn't want to make a movie about you know the social cote of the of the immigrant experience because there are plenty of them. There are great ones, uh, and it's funny because now I'm I I was somehow uh, not attacked, but you know some people in Romania commented about that the film did not explore a bit more the the so the, the the difficulties and the how the immigrants do live and so on and so forth while in spain the critics we released the film last week on a, on an online platform and the critics were saying wow it's uh it's good that somebody came out of spain to make a movie about these marginals about these immigrants which were never been i mean this kind of special uh, immigrant experience we, we did not know and and it was interesting to observe how how both countries were actually positioning themselves in analyzing the movie mm. it, it is there is a the 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 story of immigration is in the background and i think it depends how important it is for you i think for us we're all you know we immigrated we left romania and it was uh discreet enough and um um real you know and true authentic you know that we we uh, totally identified with it the the humiliation the fact of being feeling marginalized the the language barrier um and the um, this um attachment to your language to romanian right in the text and i was going to ask you just the, the last question about the film and then we can talk about uh, tiff a little bit and then open up the, the floor um what does it how do you um uh, it's the the last uh, scene of the the film ends with the author burning his book in Romanian. And there are a few instances in the film where the only time he is understood in Romanian is uh, when he talks, when he reads when in Romanian to the women character in the film. Um, so um, can you comment a little bit about it? What, what are we to understand? Because the, the ending is you know, we don't know what will happen in a way. It's open to interpretation. The police is coming, you know, in a way he's liberated from that parking. And then again, I feel this is a metaphor of the Romanian people itself. We're always waiting in a parking lot for something, you know, and, and you were talking about the fact that we need to face our past actually. So maybe this is, you know, the key, you know, to, to uh, get away from that parking lot. But uh, can you comment a little bit about the, the ending scene when he He's burning his book. He was. He just published a book in Romanian. Nobody's going to read it. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't comment on this, Otilia, because I, I deliberately put it there as to open up all sorts of uh, possible, yeah, ideas and thoughts. And so I, I would not say a word about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we uh, you even told us that. So we'll we'll uh, think more about it. Um, so um, TIFF uh, is um, had its eight had eighteen editions, right? Um, uh, so far, it was supposed to happen between May and June. Okay, and um, I think in an um, in an article in an interview that you gave in March, you were saying that you are looking at alternative potential dates in August. Is that still the case? And if TIFF is going to happen in August, how is um, uh, what will be the format? 
I we were talking a lot about you know all these three possible options like canceling it or doing it as an online event or be stubborn and imagining that we could do it you know on a on a phys a physical edition in in offline as we did it all the, those years and i somehow i have to share and uh be on the same line with the boss of Cannes film festival thierry fremont who i think he gave uh, two or three interviews for for variety indie wire ski international and and he said that Cannes is a celebration of cinema and how on earth you could do this online i mean for him for him an event like Cannes would would really uh, would be in a total nonsense or waste of time online like how you would cherish how you would you would uh, keep the same uh, the same level of of, of the, the, those cues the wow feeling after seeing a great movie the you know immediately a great movie scene in can determine you know cues of the sales agent the people who sell the movie and i mean there is a certain energy there which you know we are now moving back to Romania. We are not, I'm not trying to compare it, but it's again, it's a, it's a festival which, which is, is, I mean, the, the audience filled the rooms. We had sold out screenings. The whole city were, was breathing film for 10 days, day and night. And it's, I thought we have to fight up to the very last minute to try to do it as it was even though we are we are kind of a uh, very aware that it's gonna be different i mean it's it will be a very boutique edition with less films we will not fill an old medieval square with three thousand people it's gonna be maybe no more than one thousand all the cinemas will have i think half of the capacity full so it's gonna be i think tricky difficult but we are we are we are aiming to do it because I think it's a uh, what I'm what me and my colleagues are are I think uh, we 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 are very determined to to fight for this continuity and I know that our audience and the people want to to return to their normal life and I think returning to a normal life would mean not uh, doing. Uh, zoom meetings or you know up to mm -hmm. uh or watching movies online online and online but they would like to see maybe a movie uh, outdoor and uh of course assuming all the social distancing measures and security and so, and so on but yeah we would try to complement uh, the this planned event with some online screenings especially for the people who would maybe might have be afraid to travel to transylvania so it's going to be also for the very first time a very strong online dimension but this would not prevail i mean it's gonna be there but yeah we we are still hoping to do it as we did it in all those years mm. Um, can you comment a little bit about how TIFF Unlimited, the online platform that you launched very fast, and I have to admit, I, I always admire you for your vision, for your visionary spirit, you know, you're always ahead, you know, uh, you were among the first, you know, to uh, kind of launch this. Um, um, we launched it, we launched it last year when we knew that, that the pandemic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we launched it last year, and it was a big boom. After we launched it in June, and then you know the interest slowly went down. And mm -hmm. uh, I was looking recently at some graphics, and January and February was moving. Uh, you know, I mean, we got some subscribers interested to see you know uh, important you know titles from art house cinema all over the world and Romanian films and so on. And from March when everything you know boomed uh, all the graphics are like this march april it's uh, i mean we had lots of subscribers like new ones and it was it was we were fortunate that uh, uh, we we had a vehicle in place to 
to keep in a way the the festival spirit and we've tried to elaborate more and to expand our catalog so uh we are we are i think pleased with what we've achieved the last months that's amazing. How do you see, actually, um, there's a, 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 a debate about the way uh, in which uh, having um, film festivals online and also many free events, you know, online can affect uh, filmmakers, actually, who need, you know, this network, you know, of uh, prestigious film festivals where they launch their work and then, then they get distributed worldwide. You know, how, um, how is this going to play out, you know, because many film festivals are going to have, you know, this um, uh, continuity online, you know, this virtual, you know, platforms. Uh, there's going to be a lot of competition. Uh, many will lose, you know, those who are not prepared, like Transylvania Film Festival will, you know, be, will be left behind. Uh, so can you comment a little bit about it? What will be the consequences I, if we I, can? Uh, I think for filmmakers it's going to be worse. I mean, uh, by by uh, if all these festivals would uh, would move i mean all if more and more will move online i don't think it's it's going to be good for for filmmakers because uh most of the time you what you would i mean what you want as a filmmaker to to have your film being seen to have contact with the with the spectators to maybe meet a distributor or a producer for your for in pro i mean for your upcoming project and all these things would not happen uh, with the same intensity i mean i remember in in in, in transylvania it was beside you know get, having this this immediate feedback from the people i remember it was an argentinian director alejandro fadel some years ago who met a french producer and they met in Transylvania and they did a movie together after four or five years. This movie was screened last year in Cannes. So I, I, it, it was just an example of, about the, the, the power between the, the chemist, the, the, the energies and everything what's behind a film festival which is not online. All these things would, would not be, you know, if the festival is online and I, one thing also might work and it's not about festivals it's about releasing your movies uh, you were mentioning parking and I, I told you the film was released actually last weekend uh, in spain on a vod platform mostly because there are no cinemas opened of course and i think it was a smart move from our producer and distributor there because they were initially aiming to release the movie in march on, on big screens but i think for some movies and some territories, I mean, I'm, I was imagining my film would play, maybe it was a limited release. It's, it's, I think it's a, it's a very intimist film. It's not a blockbuster coming from Romania, even though he's speaking in Spanish, but I was sure that the film would be one among many others and blockbusters if the film would have been released on cinemas. As it was now released on VOD, on a big platform, uh we got a lot of reviews a lot of press it was like uh, among the very few titles which decided to to start its uh, the, their commercial career on, on online and and i think it was a good uh maybe the return in terms of uh you know commercial uh, revenues is not so high from what was in on theaters but i think it was a much better strategy so I think every film has its own scenario and you cannot yeah, say very firm things about yeah, one case or another. Right, yeah. So now I'm gonna open uh, the floor for questions. I'm gonna change the view so I can see, we can see each other. So you can, um, who wants, um, I'm gonna have a question in chat. Ilana is asking something about yeah. the about my my filming trajectory becoming gloomier and gloomier. Oh gosh, <laughs> I didn't think about it, but uh, yeah, maybe I don't, I don't know why. It's again about our. Um, 
Yeah, hard for me to 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 comment on this, Ilana. It's it's just about stories which are uh, inspiring me. I I'm not thinking that it's uh, yeah gloomy or not. It's about what inspires me at a certain moment in time. The I fact that I... you lost your charming naivete, right? From the Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope I'll do a comedy. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> having in plan to do a, a soccer movie about yeah, <laughs> the team, uh, the team which was in, somehow invented by Ceausescu in south of Romania. I mean, uh, he had a team there who was playing into a stadium of 20,000 into a village of 1,000 inhabitants. So uh, they have a great story behind this, this team and its players. And I was always wanting to do a soccer movie. So maybe I would, this would be less gloomier, but not for now. So I will ask you if you would like to address a question, unmute yourself and maybe present, say who you are and then. So any other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm a, a linguist and I found the use of language in your movies very interesting. Uh, not just Romanian, but the mixing of languages and the misunderstanding between characters or lack of ability to communicate. And I just um, am, am wondering if you could talk a little bit about, about your use of, of different languages and um, lack of communication between characters. I, I think it's it's fascinating and uh, especially in my in, in in my last project I I I was forced to I mean forced it was a choice of which came from the story from the script to do this movie in Spanish with Spanish cast Spanish crew we were just three Romanians in the whole crew and I've I've decided the main cast, I mean, the, the, the actor for the main cast one month before the shooting and the guy was not knowing one word of Spanish. So he was forced to learn Spanish. And actually he, he, he's very talented and he managed to learn the basics and the gra grammar and everything behind the language. But when he spoke or when, when we shoot, he learned the lines by heart. Of course, he knew what he was saying, what was important, but he was learning those lines as, you know, like an unknown, strange uh, language. But of course, he, he had in his mind what he was talking. He was helped a lot by, by, his, uh, by his colleagues from the cast. But I, I, I found it very charming and very interesting to, to polish a bit, for example, the, his level of pro his level of Spanish while we were in a way uh, going through the shooting schedule because you would not start the shooting schedule with the beginning of the film. It's always messed around and, uh, and it was kind of a complicate to navigate throughout the film because at the beginning his Spanish was, you know, it should have been not as good and then it developed. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I was fascinated by 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 how we can play with the with this, and uh, um, I would I I don't think I would be able to to do this experience again because it was very complicated and very consuming. I ended up doing the post production of the movie in Czech Republic in Prague with some mixers who were not knowing Spanish at all. So it was kind of a, like a bubble tower. I mean, it was, there were so many languages and so many people. And I think I, it was an interesting experience, but uh, at a certain moment it can became uh, very, very difficult and, uh, I, I, I would need for the moment now a, a film or a project where we are just dealing with one language because I think it's, it's a, yeah, a bit more calm experience.
Thank you. Kosti had a question too. Um, I hope, I hope I, is my microphone working? Yeah. Okay. Um, I had two questions, but I'm just going to stick with the one. How I have a story. How would I get it to into somebody's? It's a Romanian story um, of escape, etc. Um, I'm just curious how best to get it into somebody's hands. Since I'm not a writer, um, I, I, I don't mean, know. Just email email it, and then we'll see if it has potential or whatever. Can I email it to you? Yeah, don't worry. Thank you. Okay. We can. Otilia. I can. I can uh, put you in contact. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, hey, uh, hi. This is Alexandra. I, I do have a question, actually. Uh, so, and, and you know better than me when uh, cinema was invented, right? Uh, all the theater people uh, uh, started to be very anxious and start to criticizing the cinema. So we had this period of transition and when, when both cinema and theater people understood and the, their public, their respective public that the both can coexist. And, um, I don't know how you see it from from Romania and Europe, but here it's very clear that the cinemas will not open uh, this year. Uh, and the problem, it's a very economical and capitalistic problem. If they don't open this year, uh, chances that they open next year uh, are smaller and smaller. Uh, and people will, some of the cinemas and festivals in the States, they went online, so we start uh, we started watching movies, older movies online, uh, on a platform probably similar to what you are doing. And I wonder uh, if we live such an era where this new form of uh, cinemas at home, we already had the problem with Netflix and all these people. So this new form of watch, of having a catharsis, watching an older movie, uh, at home, but in a so on a kind of a cinema platform, uh, would be a new form actually. Because even when they open, uh, if they open, we we cannot open in the same condition. So the whole cathartic experience will change. So aren't we just in in this kind of era where everything changes and we we will have an a new form or of something no, or I, I I have a different view on this I mean okay. okay it will last one year two years maybe mm -hmm. you know then till the you know the vaccine will come and things will, will change radically and people would 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 like everybody would like to re to regain I mean the the life before we would not develop any kind, I think, of, uh, uh, or at least I'm talking about me, I would not develop mm -hmm. any cathartic experience staying in front of my TV and admiring uh, some kind of a new Netflix product or seeing an old Roman Polanski movie, which I might have not seen or whatever kind of other mm -hmm. filmmaker. Uh, I, I, I think that we would all uh, think and dream for the moment when we'll be again in a cinema hall, living the magic, and uh, you know, uh, be not being distant one from another, but just feeling safe and secure. And I think again, I was talking about about the Khan emotions. Mm -hmm. But it's it's you you've all I think experienced it in in your you know cinema even though it's a neighborhood cinema or a bigger one there is a certain energy there is a certain feeling which which is created by by this group of two hundred people audience or more and this is un. I mean, you you cannot change it with with your sofa back home. But aren't you afraid that uh, uh, aren't you afraid that some of the some of us will just say, you know what? It's it's more comfortable and it's better if we stay home. And uh, I don't want to. But this finally, was, it's not that bad. Yeah, but this was happening even mm -hmm. even before. I mean, mm -hmm. it was the whole. When, when Netflix started and it was mm -hmm. the same old question about 
yeah, what, what's going to be the future of cinema? And I heard all these debates so many times. And, and I don't think uh, okay. you can, this experience cannot be replaced. And yeah, some people would, mm. would love to stay uh, back home and, uh, uh, you know, not being exposed but those people were doing it before i mean mm -hmm. okay i'm 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 more optimistic and i think people are are really expecting this moment of uh yeah experiencing again the magic mm -hmm. okay thank you any other questions um from the from you guys yes um theo if I may, oh. yes uh, theo stan from uh, washington dc immigration research forum uh, under um, I've asked a similar question to Sherban Bavlu uh, last year during the launching of uh, Charleston in DC, um, and, and he was very skeptical. But uh, a lot has happened since last year. So, uh, first, let me congratulate you as uh, not just as a director, as a producer and film festival funder, but as a visionary for adapting the, the film festival in, in Transylvania and also the, helping adapt the one in, in uh, and giving a new uh, life to the one in Seattle. Uh, we're not as fortunate as to have one uh, this year in, in DC. Um, but your online platforms are, uh, uh, I mean, this, this new venue is a treasure and I, I'd rather concentrate on the silver lining of this experience. Um, I, I, I believe that you are able, and the festivals in, in DC in these last few years have, uh, have explored themes that were relevant to, uh, to the diaspora to, and to second generation uh, Romanian American children that were not, uh, did not have the first hand experience of what had happened in Romania in the past. Uh, and now you are, oh, the, the Romanian cinema is approaching the themes of immigration, which uh, even though they are uh, uh, expressed in the uh, specific terms of, of uh, Romanian experience abroad, uh, they are universal themes, and I think uh, more and more people around the world in an era of globalization are living transcendent, trans transnational lives, and um, and in that sense, you, this this is really a, a theme to to delve into. And I congratulate you for for doing so. My question last year to Sherban Pablo was about um, the ability of the Romanian cinema industry to. Uh, create a wide audience uh, amongst uh, the diaspora about I think it's about 10 million Romanians that live abroad and in that way give them a sense of um, how should I say social cohesion uh, of joint experiences through the visual language of the Romanian film um, and um, Sherban uh, responded very skeptically saying that the Romanian films now uh, are not necessarily produced for the diaspora, that uh, they are targeting a certain cult movement and therefore um, he doesn't believe that that is the main target of the Romanian cinema industry. Um, but with what has happened uh, and, and with this uh, opportunity to connect really, not the same experience, I'm not arguing that it will ever be the same experience as Romanians gathering in a cinema uh, in Washington, D.C. <laughs> And that is half of the of, of the experience, uh, but um, you are creating um, a permeating visual language for Romanians to to identify by, and and I think that is uh, a treasure to to be valued, not something to be <laughs> overshadowed by the fact that we don't have the same experience virtually as we do when when meeting. Uh, and I, I wanted to give the same uh, floor to you as as I did to to Sherpan Pavu and, and hear what has changed uh, and what is your perspective uh, in after this experience? I mean, it's not changed too much. My, my view is the same. I mean, we are not doing movies thinking about a particular audience. I'm not doing movies or I'm not thinking about the diaspora or about the public or in the particular city or about the Romanians. I'm try, what I'm trying is that to, what is just one single thing to make movies who are relevant for individuals living in you know different parts of the world and i think that's the that's the the thing which i think any filmmaker would would love to happen with the, with his films i remember i i was so surprised when the death of mr lazarescu by christy puyo this this 
I think, masterpiece of, of new Romanian cinema opened, I was a bit skeptical considering, I, I was a bit skeptical by the destiny of this movie because I thought, oh, there are problems of the health system in Romania and it's about, uh, it's so local. And then I seeing how, you know, the, the journey of this movie was and it, 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 it traveled everywhere, so all over the world. And people reacted in such a way not just because it's a great piece of cinema, which it is, but it's a lot about, they've all identified with this journey of an, of an old man who's about to die and he's facing the same blockage and the, he's facing the same indifference or the same kind of uh, uh, problems with uh, occurring in the health system. It, they are everywhere in US, in Colombia, in Asia, whatever. And I think this film for me was a, was a, was a lesson to learn in a way that, you know, it's not, it's about, it's about focusing on human issues and it's about, yeah, drama of an old man and blah, blah. But these simple stories sometimes not always, but sometimes can be relevant for many, many individuals all over the globe, including diaspora and so on and so forth. But we should not really, I mean, I, uh, it's hard for me to, 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 yeah, to have the audience in mind when, when, when thinking about a project, I, I, I never do it. As a Romanian American, I have to say that that might be a, a, a secondary benefit. You are uh, bringing the, the communities together in unprecedented ways uh, because of this joint language that verbalizes uh, individual experiences that weren't verbalized, weren't expressed. There was no no uh, social catharsis, uh, and it, that's that's what the film uh, uh, creates uh, the, the experience of going to the Romanian festivals and. And I wonder if the virtual uh, platform will uh, will play that role of permeating even further. Maybe not a target audience, uh, uh, but uh, a wider audience. Um, and I think Robert also had a question. Ilana pointed out to so Robert and then Roxana. Thank you. And then uh, Tudor, we're about uh, <laughs> running out of time. Thank you so yep. much. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can just, uh, it'll be very quick. I just wondered if, um, if uh, you felt like is there, are you part of a community of Romanian filmmakers? Do you feel like you're part of a community? Not that you hang out all the time necessarily, but um, are you, is there a supportive sort of system with other directors, writers, producers, etc.? I mean, we, we, it's exactly, as you said, we do not hang around too much, but we are, we are of course part in the same community and we do share uh ideas we we call each other we see each other in movies in in rough cut stage and there is a sense of uh of uh belonging to us to 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 a community and what's what's i think very good is that new and new people do come and uh what and 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 i found this very good because a lot of people were afraid that you know all this movement of the new Romanian wave might stop but look there are new and new people and and I'm very sure that one of the last documentaries which popped up from Romania collective I hope it's going to get an Oscar nomination because it's a really great movie it has a strong U.S. distributor and and that's yeah that's I think a proof that that the, there are new and more and more and more new voices on the on the stage. Thank you Roxana. Hello, hi, I'm Roxana Tudorescu. I'm from Seattle. Uh, I participate usually at the SIF festivals and um, I really enjoy the recent event, um, online uh, movies, um, uh, when I had the uh, pleasure to see the two of your movies, Tudor of Snails and Men and uh, Parking. So my first question is related probably to both of you, I don't know. So can we have more virtual events? Um, um, 
before having the Seattle Festival, that was very enjoyable for us. Um, we can actually contribute, you know, we would love to contribute to those movies and the movies in general, uh, seeing them in Romania, that was amazing. Um, and uh, if that's possible to make a virtual festival, you know, in the future, uh, for me, the advantage is I ha didn't have to drive to Seattle, find a parking spot for my car <laughs> in the middle of the night. Uh, and, you know, I enjoy also this virtual event of uh, Q&A. So the question is, can we have more of these? Or did you guys consider that as a possibility for replacing the, or not replacing, complementing the, the festival that we have every year? So do you think so? So would you would you like to do that kind of things? Um, Roxanne, I think we are. Me and Tudor were talking about it, and um, we are. I am. Uh, I'm actually talking with a local Bulgarian director who developed a um, very personable and personalized uh, platform, which is different than what I'm using right now, where I can't really present the movies and promote them as well. And um, I hope that the Romanian Film Festival, if it's not going to happen in November at SIF Film Center will have some presence, a virtual presence, and we'll continue with these meetings online next week. Robert Horton is one of the guest speakers. We'll talk about Aferim with Magda Matake, Roma rights activists, and Cristiana Grigore. So we are, and then uh, in June, we have an event with Juana Giurgiu, who presented Aria Dada, the Romanian Film Festival, and Maya Vitkova, a Bulgarian. So actually we're trying to expand to be online and also in connected with other Eastern European uh, cinematographies because we cannot be in this alone. Tudor, for, you know, the Transylvania Film Festival is old. I mean, it's 18, has 18 editions and, you know, it had the platform established already. We were kind of, we were fast enough, but we are small also, you know, so we're doing what we can, you know, given the circumstances and the resources. But uh, Tudor, um, I, I will, um, I don't know, you know, I think you will probably continue with Transylvania Film Festival to have virtual uh, events. I don't know if you do Q&As like this um, on a regular basis or this is... Not yet, but we plan. We, we plan for this year to have Q&As with filmmakers and yeah. So would that be possible for us to join the same platform? Being virtual, technically you can log in anywhere from in the world. Or are they logistical problems or can we do that? I mean, if we talk about the platform belonged, I mean, which is belonging to Transylvania, it's a bit complicated with film rights. We were securing film rights just for, for Romania, but we are now trying to expand to other countries. And we've tried to at least to have some uh, particular content for uh, Romanians living abroad. So uh, let's say stay tuned and we'll, we'll, we'll try to- That would be amazing. Uh, you know, from our perspective, that would be the one of the, greatest things that we would love to, to to join and i have one more question very quick question for tudor um very was quick because i really have to yeah. leave <laughs> no 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 quick uh of sales of men it's actually based on a real story yeah it's based on a real story which happened at this car factory but we've been i think uh yeah we've been uh, fictionalizing it a lot i mean it happened there once the workers had this, the, that idea of, you know, maybe finding a desperate solution to buy the factory themselves, but then everything, you know, fell apart and they, they were not pursuing further, but we've, we, we did it in this filmic version, so. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys for, for organizing. This is amazing. Thank you, Tudor. Thank you Thank for you. Uh, taking you. time Thank on you. Saturday night, you know, Thank so, you. and we'll keep in touch about our virtual platform and uh, future collaboration. Uh, Thank you, and we'll see you next Thank week. you. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Chapeau. <laughs>